Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very irrational exponential equation, or you could also call this a very transcendental exponential equation. We have e to the power x plus pi equals pi to the power x plus e. And we are going to solve for x because e and pi are constants. e is Euler's number. I think it's about 2.7, right? Something like that. I can't remember anything else beyond, beyond that. And pi is about 3.14. So a lot of times students are going to ask me, how many digits of pi did you memorize? And my answer is two digits after the decimal point, one and four. That's all I need. Anyways, so this is our equation. How are we going to solve it? We're going to solve it by not a very special method, but in other words, we're going to put the x's together, okay? Let me put it that way. We're going to separate, put them together, and then do something. So towards the end, I'm going to share with you two things. So stick around. One of them is going to be the graph. So you're going to get to see the graph and also the result from Wolfram Alpha. Now the graph, anyways, we'll talk about it later. So how do you solve this equation? First step is we're going to separate the exponents. As you should know, if you have something like a to the power m, oops, I don't want a straight line, m plus n, then you can basically write it as a to the m times a to the n. Obviously, we a lot of times we're going to use this equation or formula this way, but you could also use it backwards because it's an equality. So let's go ahead and write this e to the power x plus pi as e to the x times e to the pi. Great. The, we're going to do the same thing on the right-hand side, so it's going to be pi to the x times pi to the e. Now, I want you to notice two things. First, e to the x and pi to the x are variables, because x is a variable, so they are kind of functions. And e to the pi and pi to the e are constants, like e. If e is a constant, pi is a constant, e to the pi is also a constant. There is nothing that varies, right? But are these numbers transcendental? As far as I remember, they are. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But we were able to separate them. So let's go ahead and do this. Put the x's together. I'm going to divide by pi to the x. Let's go ahead and divide by pi to the x. So that's going to cancel out the pi to the x. And I also need to divide by e to the pi because I want to get rid of that as well. So e to the pi. And these two are going to cancel out. And notice that we were able to put the x's, I mean, when I say x's, of course, x is the exponent, right, on the same side. So let's rewrite our expression. It's a cleaner version. Okay, great. Now, what do we have on the left-hand side? Same exponent. What do you know about same exponents? If you have a to the n, b to the n, same exponent, right? You can write it as a single exponent and just divide the bases. So we're going to divide the bases, e over pi, and then just raise it to the power x, right? So they have a common exponent. And then this expression cannot be simplified. I mean, you can numerically find it using a calculator or a computer, but let's leave it at that. If you don't like this, you can call it k. k is a constant, and then at the end, you're going to replace it or substitute, back substitute. Yes, that was the word I was looking for. So. We have this simple equation, e over pi to the power x equals k. By the way, did I tell you e is Euler's number? That's a very special number because Euler is a very special mathematician. He's just amazing. Anyways, so how do you solve from here? Easy. You just have to bring down the x by logging both sides. Log is basically a function that allows you to write an exponential equation in a different form, or if the variable is an exponent, it's actually very valuable. So like if you have an equation like a to the x equals b, to solve for x, you would use logs. If you the variable is on the right-hand side, of course, you need to use exponentiation and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go to log both sides, but what base should we use? I like natural log just ln or base e because we have an e is there a base pi i mean you could but that's not very common let's go ahead and ln both sides 
Okay, great. Now, here's one property you can use. X uh, is going to go to front, obviously. That was the goal. So now we get X times ln e over pi equals ln k. And then from here, obviously, you can divide both sides by ln e over pi. And is that the end of it? Not yet. Because e over pi can be simplified, and also we need to back substitute k. And we're going to look at a couple different things. So, what can I do? Back substitute. What is k? Pi to the power e divided by e to the pi. Remember that? This is k. And at the bottom we have this. So, we kind of got the solution, yes, in terms of these constants. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit, shall we? Now, we have ln of a quotient. So, what do we know about properties of uh, logs? Well, if you have ln of a quotient like a over b, that can be written as ln a minus ln b. And if you have a product, that becomes a sum. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that property. And then we're going to use the power property, which says ln a to the n is n times ln a. So, you can bring the power down. By the way, we already used it, but we're going to use it again. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to work on this. So ln pi to the e, and let me go ahead and do this actually. It's probably going to be better if I do it. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and carry it. Too lazy to write it again. All right, so let's go ahead and separate uh, as a difference first because that's a ln of a quotient. ln pi to the e minus ln e to the pi. And at the bottom, we have ln e minus ln pi. Does ln e look familiar? If you said 1, yes, that's the right answer. ln e is log e with base e, so that's 1. Great. Now, there is one thing we can do, though. Two things. Bring these down as well. So when you do, you're going to get e ln pi minus pi ln e over 1 minus ln pi. Wow, ln e pops up again. We're going to replace it with 1, and now it's even going to be simpler. So x becomes e ln pi minus pi, because ln e is 1, divided by 1 minus ln pi. Hmm. That's kind of interesting, right? Anyways, that's the solution. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the graph of this equation. The graph is not in Desmos, and you know why? Because Wolfram Alpha gives us a better picture. Otherwise, you have to zoom out forever. And that's going to look like two vertical lines. Anyways, that's the solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. Notice that the blue one, which is e to the x plus pi, is almost always larger. But then, after a while, they're going to intersect. And the other function is going to take larger values. So there's only one solution, as we verified, right? We got the solution, and we're going to check it now. There is only one solution to this equation. Great. Let's go ahead and take a result from Wolfram Alpha and we'll finish up. The real solution is pi minus e. Wait a minute. What is log? Well, according to Wolfram Alpha, log is ln. Okay? Based on Wolfram Alpha's interpretation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.